So, for the modeling, we, we um, had the students work in uh, Lego units. So, this is the basic, tiniest little square Lego brick in the Lego kit. So, a Lego unit at our scale is 10 meters by 10 meters by one story high. Okay, and then of course you can map all kinds of things to that. You can map energy or activities or people or vehicle vehicles, even urban farming. You can map vegetables to it. You certainly could map costs to it. So you can see that little Lego unit there. Uh, if you're uh, talking about workers in a restaurant, you can map two people to that Lego unit. If you're talking about a Starbucks, you can map 300 customers to it, et cetera, et cetera. So as you build the, the city, you're building all the data that will define the, the basic qualities of the city. So for example, uh, one Lego unit with the kind of apartments we're talking about will accommodate uh, uh, basically two people. So a double loaded quarter, this tower here, which is 15 stories high, would accommodate 60 people, just as an example of how that gets mapped. And so we started by taking the smaller areas within the neighborhood and prototyping in it in with, with what we call sandbox. Um, so you can see how this is one quick study, how you can you very quickly look at the mix of functions that might make up that, that single block. Um, now, in parallel to developing these LEGO models, the students all built parametric models using Rhino and, and Grasshopper, and they will talk about that. And we even had some kids help out. That was quite fun. And um, now what we're doing with this as a next phase, and I, I think many of you, the students taking the workshop, haven't seen this, but this, we're, we're, we're now looking at building rather than these color-coded by use models, building a white stage set Lego model and pro then projecting data or facade simulation or lighting or all kinds of information. Agent-based modeling can be studied there. And we're now developing the tools. Michael pushed this quite far recently. <laughs> the idea that you would start with one, building a quick um, three-dimensional model Stage two, you scan the model. Stage three, you bring it into the computational world where you can deploy all kinds of simulation. Stage four, then you build a white stage set model. Five, you project information on it. And ultimately, we'd like to have the ability to uh, scan it in real time. And as you're changing that model, you, um, you can continue this loop. And you, you then have a pretty powerful rapid prototyping tool for urban planning. Uh, this is a little video that we put together. This shows working with the physical models. Here's the physical color-coded model being replaced by a, a white model, projected information on it, uh, <clears throat> a quick uh, exploration of how you might project more detailed information onto the model. Boy, that monitor is really dark. But if you could see that, he replaced part of that tower with a more detailed tower, and then uh, uh, the idea is to get that to update in real time and to continue what we call this Lego loop. Well, that's a quick introduction.